Coming up on 5-Minute News. Georgia Grand Jury recommends perjury indictments in Trump case. EPA chief begs residents to trust the government on train wreck. And Carrie Lake loses her appeal in Arizona governor race. It's Friday, February 17. I'm Anthony Davis. A special grand jury investigating efforts by the disgraced former President Donald Trump and his allies to overturn his 2020 election loss in Georgia says it believes one or more witnesses committed perjury and urged local prosecutors to bring charges. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis should seek appropriate indictments for such crimes where the evidence is compelling, according to portions of the special grand jury's final report that were released on Thursday. The former president never testified before the special grand jury, meaning he is not among those who could have perjured themselves. But the report doesn't foreclose the possibility of other charges, and the case still poses particular challenges for Trump, in part because his actions in Georgia were so public. Trump and his allies made unproven claims of widespread voter fraud and berated Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and Governor Brian Kemp for not acting to overturn his narrow loss to President Joe Biden in the state. State and federal officials, including Trump's attorney general, have consistently said the election was secure and there was no evidence of significant fraud. After hearing extensive testimony on the issue, the special grand jury agreed in a unanimous vote that there was no widespread fraud in Georgia's election. The head of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency got a first-hand look on Thursday at the toll left by a freight train derailment in Ohio, where toxic chemicals spilled or were burned off, leaving the stench of fresh paint nearly two weeks later. EPA Administrator Michael Regan, who walked along a creek that still reeks of chemicals, sought to reassure sceptical residents that the water is fit for drinking and the air safe to breathe around East Palestine, where just under 5,000 people live near the Pennsylvania state line. I'm asking they trust the government. I know that's hard. We know there's a lack of trust, Regan said. Since the derailment, residents have complained about headaches and irritated eyes and finding their cars and lawns covered in soot. The hazardous chemicals that spilled from the train killed thousands of fish and residents have talked about finding dying or sick pets and wildlife. Residents are frustrated by what they say is incomplete and vague information about the lasting effects from the disaster which prompted evacuations. At least five lawsuits have been filed against the railroad, which announced last week it is creating a minimal million-dollar fund to help the community, whilst continuing to remove spilled contaminants from the ground and streams and monitoring air quality. Families who evacuated say they want assistance figuring out how to get the promised financial help. Beyond that, they want to know whether the railroad will be held responsible. State and federal officials have promised to make sure Norfolk Southern not only pays for the cleanup but also reimburses residents. No one was injured when about 50 cars derailed in a fiery, mangled mess on the outskirts of East Palestine on February 3rd. Officials seeking to avoid an uncontrolled blast evacuated the area and opted to release and burn toxic vinyl chloride from five rail cars sending flames and black smoke billowing into the sky. An Arizona appeals court has rejected MAGA Republican extremist Carrie Lake's challenge of her defeat in the Arizona governor's race to Democrat Katie Hobbs, denying her request to throw out election results in the state's most populous county and hold the election again. In a ruling on Thursday, the Arizona Court of Appeals wrote to Lake, who claimed problems with ballot printers at some polling places on election day were the result of intentional misconduct, presented no evidence that voters whose ballots were unreadable by tabulators at polling places were not able to vote. 
The court said that even a witness called by Lake to testify had confirmed that ballots that could not initially be read at polling places could still ultimately have their vote counted. And while a pollster who testified on behalf of Lake claimed the polling place problems had disenfranchised enough voters to change the outcome in Lake's favour, the court said his conclusion was baseless. The appeals court wrote that Lake's appeal failed because the evidence supports the conclusion that voters were able to cast their ballots, that votes were counted correctly, and that no other basis justifies setting aside the election results. Lake, who lost to Hobbs by just over 17,000 votes, was among the most vocal 2022 Republicans promoting former President Trump's election lies, which she made the centerpiece of her campaign. While most of the other election deniers around the country conceded after losing their races in November, Lake did not. Hobbs's attorney said Lake was trying to sow distrust in Arizona's election results and offered no proof to back up her allegations of election misconduct. You can subscribe to 5 Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5 Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate, and review online at 5minute.news. 5 Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health, and climate, delivering independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily.